In this episode, we will now work on the aeoniums along the fence. Speaking of aeoniums, you might know that in previous videos that the aeonium is my second most favorite genus, and that's right after Echeveria. I like rosette forming plants and both Echeveria and aeoniums feature this. You might also know that my all-time favorite succulent plant is the aeonium short black. A bit of history about aeoniums. Most of them are native to the Canary Islands, with some of them coming from Madeira, Morocco, and parts of East Africa. I learned from this book that aeoniums were previously lumped together in sempervivums, and this was due to their similar general growth patterns. It was only in 1836 that Webb and Berthelot elevated aeoniums to its own separate genus. At that time, there was only 20 species that were identified. Since then, more species have been added, not necessarily for the better. Grinovia, for example, contained four species, and these have been recently added to aeoniums, just in 1996. If you want to know more, I'd highly recommend this book. This, this is Aeonium in Habitat and Cultivation by Rudolf Schultz. But anyway, a lecture on aeonium history is not what this video is about. I'll probably create an in-depth video about that at some point. So, let's plant! Just in case you were wondering about the background noise, it's just Zach playing around. And here are my aeoniums. Before I can get to work on them, I would need to pull all of them out. Well, except maybe for the smaller ones, the Haworthy, on the ground. I only need to pull out the bigger, the bigger ones. That way I can shift all of them, maybe move them around, rearrange according to the layout that I had in mind. It's now time to pull them out. quite a lot of them, so maybe I might need some help. We've got all of this space now here. Ayi, Ayi. Ayi, where's Oli? Oli's not here. Look for Oli. Go look for Oli. 
Yes, sir. We have more. We have more space here now. So with most of the larger aeoniums removed now, I can start thinking about the layout. But right now, as you can see, there's lots of detritus, dead leaves, all sorts of stuff here, which is fine. Because what I can do is I could could let I could let them continue rot, decompose. This would this would put back nutrients into the soil. But what I would need to do, I think, is to top up the soil, add a bit more, just raise it a bit, because I intend to add some cuttings in rather than mature plants. So the extra bit of soil will help them, the extra elevation will help them anchor this, themselves more and they won't fall over. Zach and I went into the house for a little snack break and after what feels like almost an hour inside the sun went down a bit more so the shadows being casted are a lot longer which means that the area I'll be working in would be much cooler. You might have noticed that I haven't pulled out this Aeonium sunburst yet. I'm planning to place it up on, the, on top of this mound but I'm still thinking about the placement of the others. So it's staying there for a bit more. I just didn't want it to subject to any unnecessary uprooting. 
because it's doing fine in its spot right now and I only have to work on the layout, the, the spot behind them. Before we get to planting, I think it's a good idea to identify them first and group them according to the layout that I had in mind. So what I was thinking to do was to have the, the ones that go dark towards the right side and the ones that tend to stay yellow or green at the left side. So basically we're looking at a gradient from green to black. This first one here is the Aeonium Short Black and as you know this is my favorite succulent. Right next to it is an Aeonium Velour. It usually turns brown and slightly reddish when it's dormant. Up next is an Aeonium Blushing Beauty. This is a sister seedling to the Aeonium Velour. So they have the same parents. Unlike the Velour, the Blushing Beauty tends to go more red. But if it doesn't get enough sunlight, then it stays green, as you can see right now. The next one is an Aeonium Arboreum Zwartkop. It's the darkest of the Aeoniums. The next ones here are more blushing beauties. When I started planting them out, I had a few cuttings, so that's more of them here. This next one here, which looks a bit scraggly, is an Aeonium Arboreum Atropurpureum. I think they look great while they're young, but as they grow older and go more leggy, they look a bit messy. So this might be better off with somewhere that's not as crowded as this spot. So I'm moving this one out. Again, this one here is another blushing beauty. So I seem to have a lot of them spread around. I will have to consolidate them. So they, so they don't get all over the place. These ones are just more atropurpureums. The short ones that you see here are blushing beauties again. And I would really need to pick a few of them. Maybe the shortest bush from them. Because I want this area to be compact. These two tall green ones, they, these are Aeonium Arboreum, the, the regular green type. These ones can get quite tall and they branch out profusely. The thing about this is that they seem to clash with the look of the other Aeoniums. I'm going to plant this somewhere else where they can get a lot more space to stretch their legs. This is where the new spot comes in handy. And finally, this last one here, this is an Aeonium Starburst. This is a partially variegated form of the David Bramwelly. A fully variegated version of this is actually a Sunburst. If you compare them side by side, by side the Sunburst is the fully variegated version of the David Bramwelly. I've also been noticing that it has a fully reverted version. One of the offsets or a few of the offsets here do not have the yellow markings. So I think it's safe to say that I now have a David Bramwelly. Haha, <laughs> cool. I've decided that I want the Sunburst to go up here, so I'm going to plant it now. completely forgot that I laid down some concrete edges here. I might have to plant this in between, between one of them. I just remember that I got this Aeonium Castello Paive variegated from Marie MLD. Maybe this one is better to be put here while the sunburst is more close to the edge. So I'll go undo what I just did. There's still some space here, and I think this Aeonium Starburst cutting would be a perfect fit. So 
that takes care of the variegated ones. I still have one more variegated plant and it's this larger Aeonium Sunburst. And as you can see, most of the pups, most of the offsets have already fallen out or broken off and some of them I cut away. So I, I was briefly contemplating resetting the big one but then again I'm starting to like the look of a, I'm starting to like the look of this it looks like a tall pole so I'm going to cut off the other offsets leaving the big rosette alone and I'm going to plant it this way looks good huh Now it's very important that you mount it. For one, it gives it the proper support that it needs. And another reason would be that the mounting directs the airflow upwards towards the stem. This would reduce the chances of fungal rot. And so far we are seeing a lollipop. I'm wondering if I should add some plants around it, but considering what happened to them over the past year, I don't think I'll want them to be crowded again. I'll have to leave with this look for now, this bare look, turkey-like, we'll see, maybe I could just plant some sedums or some ground cover over here, or it might be a better idea if I just move the Haworthies, but I'll do that later. Now with the starburst out of the way, I think it's about time I added a David Bramwell into the mix. So, here goes. After the David Bramwell, I'm thinking of adding some greens now. And the first thing that came to mind is the Aeonium Herbicum that I rescued from work. And here's what it looks like now. It's, it's just a tiny stump, but that's mainly because it shed a lot of leaves back when it became dormant in summer but if you could remember the old photos that I had of this one this one this can go quite huge even much larger than the starburst that you see now so I might need to give it a bit of space maybe this is enough it looks funny right now with its little stump and just sitting in the soil but give it until the end of winter and it, will, and it would have grown really huge. Pretty exciting. We're finally, re we're finally reaching the end of the plot and we're still doing greens. So I think for consistency sake, I'm going to add another green here. And for this, I'm thinking of using this Aeonium Blushing Beauty. And yes, I know this one is this one is not technically supposed to be just green but compared to the velour this one tends to be lighter and even and it can even go red so i think that's an okay compromise besides i don't really like the the regular arboreum the tall green one it just looks so messy man and there we go as you can see there's still a lot of space in between And although we know that the gap will be closed once these guys grow and offset, I still think that maybe we could shift some things around. I'm thinking of just placing some short blacks around them. Maybe do it a bit sparsely since, since short blacks can be quite clumpy. At least that's a good way to get them started, you know. Because I want to make a, a whole lot of them. And right now I only have a few cuttings, so I just plant the cuttings now individually. And I don't mind if they fill up the space, because at least they provide some contrast. Let's go do that now. But 
I'm going to do is to litter the area with some of the cuttings of the ANU short black. Right now I have a few offsets and I'm just going to plant them between this specimen plants. Got a lot more here. I'm not sure what I want to do with this tip, the big head. I might just keep this in the pot for now and eventually reset it. So I'm going to toss this to the side for now and work on the smaller ones. Hey, Zach. Hi, Ali. Hi, Ali. Yeah, all is here. Cap. Yeah. Cap. Yeah, hello, Cap. Right now the plants are still quite small so it looks a bit messy. But given time they will once they grow into it they will look a lot better. Maybe the last thing that I should do is to tighten up the space, you know. So I would be moving the Howardy further in. That way they do not creep along the steps. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, and Camille Narvaez. Please check out my Patreon, that's patreon.com slash seriescapades. Any amount you pledge goes a long way to helping support this channel. And as always, there's no obligation to do it. You just watching these videos are enough support for me. I made quite a mess. And I would need to transfer them somewhere so they don't die so I might just plant them along in the new area first temporarily them here temporarily.
It's dark outside and I've called it a day. I'm actually in the house right now trying to unwind and relax. I was just looking at my phone, look at the weather forecast and I just realized I screwed up with removing the shade structures. According to the forecast, we're going to have a couple of days this weekend that are close to 40 degrees. Yeah, that's not good man. <laughs> I better set up those shades before the weekend. Oh yeah, before I forget, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.